Hello everyone. A warm welcome to all my plotting ninja. Welcome to the course on data visualization using Python. So far, you have dealt with two major libraries, the matplotlib and the cbon. The matplotlib and the cbon are the two major libraries that are used for the purpose of plotting or data visualization. But as I told you earlier, that data visualization is all about creating stories about your data. Stories which are not only attractive, but can give you meaningful and data driven insights so that you can take a viable decision making. Let me introduce you another library today. And the name of the library is Bokeh. Now it is the time to really do some advanced stuff. That the bokeh scores over the matplotlib or the cbon library in a variety of ways. So far, whatever plots you have produced using the matplotlib or the cbon library have been static in nature. They are not interactive. There is nothing that you can do with that plot. You can simply state, rise the movements of data and can make stories out of it. But what if I give you more options? What if I give you more things that you can include? Now, let's first see that why Bokeh and what opportunities or what benefits it gives you over the matplotlib or the cbon library. One, the flexibility. Bokeh is used, can be used for common plotting requirements, which we have been done or which we have been doing for uh, using the matplotlib or the cbon. And it can also help you in custom and complex use cases that we would be covering in. In terms of productivity, it can interact with any type of Py data or Python data like Pandas or the Jupyter Notebook. The level of interactivity is very high in case of Bokeh, and that's the major advantage over the matplotlib or the cbon. Whatever plots you produce using the cbon or the matplotlib are static in nature, but there are plot with the help of Bokeh, you can produce lots of interactive plots where the users can interact with them in a number of ways. Then it is very very powerful. Now this section I would be taking in last video and this is something very very exclusive for you. Something which you will not find covered in other courses of data visualization. Which is the custom JavaScript. Bokeh and JavaScripts come together to give some excellent visualizations to your data. I will discuss two popular such JavaScripts. Then shareable, you can share the bokeh plots in a variety of ways. You can export them into Excel, you can download them, you can uh, embed them into an HTML and so on. And then bokeh is open source, that means free to use. Anybody can use and enjoy it and can visualize its data. Now, there are certain facts that you need to understand about bokeh. There's a terminology which we know as glyphs in bokeh. So we, we call it as plots with glyphs. Now, glyph is nothing. Any plot, whatever plot you make, it consists of different type of shapes, which might be a line, circle, rectangle, square, ellipse, oval. These geometric shapes in bokeh are referred to as glyphs. Now, bokeh plots are constructed using the bokeh.plotting interface. That's the major interface that you would for all of our default styles, tools, and parameters that we need. And we'll be discussing line plot, bar plot, patch plot, and the scatter plot. These shapes will give you a lot of visual information about whatever set of data or the data sets you want to visualize. Let us start with the line plot. So one of the very basic plots that you can produce. The logic is very simple. You need to make the necessary imports from the bokeh.plotting module. So import figure output underscore file because here the bokeh output is not produced within the Jupyter interface rather than it would be outside the Jupyter so you have to mention this output underscore file and then the show so these are my x and y values x is a list of five digits one two four, five y is again list of five digits two four six eight and ten so output underscore file i want to name it as line dot html then these are the figure parameters that you need to give that how you want your figure area or the plot area to be. 
like title is one parameter that you need to give the title of your plot then how you want to name your x axis label so it is x underscore axis label and how you want to name your name your y axis label so this particular uh, code here will uh, assign the relevant uh, parameters to the figure and then finally you want to produce a line so i will use the fig dot line function and i want to produce a line between x and y and then finally show fig in the matplotlib we used to uh, have plt here we have the show function please remember i have used fig in the parenthesis because i have defined fig as my figure so instead of fig if you are using something else suppose you are writing p then you have to write show p here and this would be p dot line not fig dot line so you have to be very careful this is the common mistake that are done and you will see a simple line plot as you are seeing then uh, the bar plot again a very very common plot so when we use bar or why should we use bar i have discussed this with you when we were discussing the seaborn so bar plot there are two functions that or two options that are given by the bokeh library one you either you want to produce horizontal bars two or whether you want to go for the vertical bars horizontal bars that means the bars will be shown horizontally across the plot width and vice versa in case of vertical bar again the code is very simple you have to make the necessary imports from the bokeh.plotting library then you have to define your figure parameters so here i have defined that the my plot area should be of this plot width and this right then fig.hbar now since i want to show horizontal bar so i will use the fig.hbar function and it is y now in uh, y equal to 2 for 6 or i you only need to define the y values okay and height left left would be 0 i will tell you why right is 1 2 3 right means these are basically the x coordinates of your right edges and the color so y the y values then this right parameter here is basically the x coordinate of the edges so x values are written here okay and this left is basically the x coordinate of the left edges now since you are making a horizontal bar so left edges will not be there that is why left is zero okay and then height is basically the height of the vertical bar what what maximum height uh height you want that you can specify if you want to produce a vertical bar then it's quite simple you have to simply change the function from fig.h bar to fig.v bar parameters would be reverse now here you will mention the x values and the y values will be mentioned as top okay so top here means the y coordinates of the top edges now since the there is no bottom in vertical bars so bottom is zero. and then the width means what width you want for vertical bars so that width you can mention right here can increase or decrease but 0.5 is bare minimum that you should have okay so a little bit of little bit of change that you need to note here so when you are introducing h bar you need to specify y values and your x values would be mentioned in the right parameter when you are producing a vertical bar your x values will be written here and y values will be taken as the top parameter okay and then you can show fake to produce the vertical bars so this is how the bar plots can be done. Another interesting plot is the pot patch plot in Bokeh. The patch plot is basically used in a uh, when you want to shade a certain region of space in a specific color. Or let's say there's a in your data there's a there's a group just showing similar set of properties. So you want to highlight that group. You want to fill that particular space with color that particular region or that particular group with color that can be done with the help of patch plot very 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 interesting sort of plot or plot plot functionality that is offered by poke and something which you should know for but before we really go into patch plot let's see the working of the three what we have done so first we start off with the line plot okay so we need to make the necessary imports then this is the defining the x and the y data which i have from there the output i mentioned uh, because in bokeh uh, your uh, plots will not be within the jupyter interface they would be outside the jupyter interface so you can mention anything here any name whatever you like dot html will remain constant then uh, finally you come with the figure parameters 
okay so we need to make mention the title the x-axis label the y-axis label and then finally i want to produce a line plot so i will say fig dot line line plot between x and y so if i run this function and let's see what comes to us so you might have this type of message so you just need to simply click it and this is the line plot okay now if you see carefully if you visualize carefully there is a toolbar on the right hand side a default toolbar which will always be there in bokeh plots and that is why i told you that the level of interaction that you can done with do you can do with bokeh plot is simply awesome this level of interaction was not available with the, with the matplotlib or the c1 library so there are a variety of tools that are mentioned here like this is the pan tool pan tool is basically if you want to move your you know if you want to move your plot here and there you want to you know a particular area you can simply move your graph not done with matplotlib or the c then this is the zoom tool if you want to zoom a particular area let's say i want to see what is happening here so i can zoom this area i can see what is happening it will show me the zoom figure all right then i can save this is another default tool so you can save you know you can save your plots so so much of level of interaction and this is only few th these are only few options that you are seeing here the default options of the of the bokeh plot you want to customize it you can customize it there are many many tools available in the bokeh.models interface that i would be discussing with you in the later part of this course you can add more tools you can remove the default tools you can customize it lot number of ways depending on what level of interaction you want to do with it and that's where the bokeh scores over the matplotlib or the c1 library then let's come to the horizontal bars okay that's what we need to introduce horizontally you need to first define the figure parameters then fig dot h bar so y values will be defined and x values will be under the right parameter and then finally show fig and run this you will see a horizontal bar right there again this default set of tool will definitely be there. then if you want to go for the vertical bar okay so vertical bar so again the figure parameters the fig dot v bar now here you have to define the x values and the y values will be taken as the top parameter width 0.5 that means the width of bar that you want to showcase which is a very very important parameter and if you run this one this code will find the vertical pass okay again the default tool is there which will always be there unless and until you customize it or you remove it or you add certain add certain more tools but then that would be the later part of the show and so far and then find the patch plot that i will take it in the next session so all the best and uh, it's time to really grab some advanced stuff and some beautiful stuff till that time keep plotting and happy plotting